Hi everyone, welcome back. So uh, let me start the next session, which is on program indicators and how to use program indicators for data analysis. But before that, let me share the word of the day, which is spike wax. Again, another vaccine name. I'm also copying this text to the chat. All right. So uh, today we are going to discuss uh, under the program indicators on how to use program indicators for analysis of tracker data. So mind you, this is uh, not uh, a session which will focus on how to configure a program indi program indicator because that will be uh, taking place separately uh, in our tracker configuration academy. But here we will discuss how to use um, the existing program indicators that have been configured into your system for tracker data analysis. So the objectives of the session, um, we will describe what a program indicator is. And we will also describe how program indicators are derived. Uh, we will also understand the difference between the event and enrollment program indicators. Then we will try to understand how program indicators can fill tracker data analysis gaps, which are present in other visualization tools. For example, if you can remember, uh, in the event report I mentioned yesterday, there are some gaps. And uh, we will discuss how program indicators can fill these gaps. And then create visualizations using program indicators derived from tracker data. This is uh, uh, what we will be doing uh, during the demonstration. Right, so uh, program indicators are computed variables based on data elements, attributes, or constants used to aggregate individual level data. So as I briefly mentioned yesterday, we are using program indicators whenever we want to calculate or compute something uh, which might be a com combination or which, which can be a standalone of a variable based on data elements, attributes, or constants, right? And um, these are mainly coming from tracker data. So probably like uh, to give you an example, like if you have a, uh, if, you, if you want to kind of count a uh, uh, number of track entities who are having a disease, right? Uh, we can do that using a program indicator. For example, let's look at this example. We can create a summary count of the number of AstraZeneca versus administered uh, by going through this program and counting the events which meet this criteria. So for example, um, when we look at this uh, table below, we will see like uh, here we can see we have uh, a column for dose number, right? Uh, which mentions that it's the first dose and second dose. And then we also have uh, the last column as vaccine name. So because we have this as a line list, even using the line list, we can count, right? So for example, if we use the filter for that data element, we can count. But like, if we want to get this as one single value, we can use a program indicator to get a calculation of, uh, uh, say, the... Uh, people who have received uh, AstraZeneca vaccine for the first dose as a single value. So this calculation happens automatically without we have to do anything uh, like what we did yesterday using um, the event report. So we don't have to use the analytic tools in DHIS2, the analytic tools apps in DHIS2 to, to, to make this calculation. So that's what the program indicators does. It does the ca calculation automatically and then give us the uh, exact value. And in some ways, uh, it is similar to using the pivot table output uh, style in event reports for some of the functionalities or uh, displaying option sets within the chart in event visualizing. So for example, yesterday when I was doing the event uh, reports and today morning when you did the, uh, um, the event visualizer, 
uh, there were like some of the tools which are available in those apps which can substitute that previous example i showed you right so there is a bit of an overlap but uh, these program indicators are more powerful and we will discuss like what are the gaps program indicators can fill which cannot be uh, met by the existing tracker and its analytic tools and um, these program indicators are more flexible because they allow us to fill several limitations uh, we have covered when we were trying to analyze tracker data directly using event report, event visualizers, and maps. So uh, let's see some of the limitations that we faced while we were using these uh, analytic tools such as event report, visualizer, and the maps. So for example, when creating summary data, we had difficulty in combining or displaying data from multiple stages together. So for example, we were not able to create enrollment type pivot tables in event reports. So in event reports, we could uh, create enrollment type line list, but uh, we were not able to create enrollment type pivot reports, which are pulling data from multiple program stages, right? And then also uh, we could not create enrollment type visualizers, visualizations in event visualizer and maps. So this is one gap which we had in the existing analytic tools, which the program indicators can fill. Okay. Um, but having said that, um, there are like, I mean, you, you have to also understand there are advantages as well as few disadvantages of using program indicators. So the advantages are they offer more flexibility in uh, creating summaries of events and enrollments uh, in tracker data. They can be used in tools um, users are more familiar with. Say for example, uh, most of you must have used uh, the data visualizer and maps applications in DHS2 because you already use DHS2 for aggregate, right? So most of the users are familiar with those tools. And uh, this program indicators is a concept that you can use in aggregate tools as well, right? Not only in tracker tools. So for example, you can browse through program indicators and do some analysis uh, using the data visualizer. There we have the pivot and also the maps. They offer a number of advanced functionality, including uh, Boolean logics, like if statements, relationship counts, differences in dates, etc. right? So there are like a lot of other uh, functionalities which the uh, program indicators can do. But there are some um, disadvantages as well. Uh, one thing is each program indicator needs to be configured and this can be potentially time consuming. Because like for each, um, say combination. Now, uh, you know, like for example, you might think like we are in, in aggregate, we have this uh, for data collection, we are having, we are using uh, the category combos so that we can, you know, like if you want to combine uh, two variables and get an output and uh, you, we want the variables for each of the combination, it is automatically done. But for program indicators, it is not like that. You have to configure program indicators for each combination. So it can be kind of uh, time consuming and initial configuration uh, can be a bit uh, complicated. And users can define a requirement for a program indicator, but uh, once it is defined, you can't modify these uh, filters in real time uh, that you are that you did uh, yesterday with the event report. So if you can remember in the event reports, we could uh, decide, right? Say for example, if we wanted to uh, 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 filter the data pertaining to a particular uh, case ID, we just had to insert that case ID into the filter. But uh, this kind of flexibility is not there with program indicators because these are pre-configured. And if you want to add a fil or change a filter, you will have to uh, inform a person who has uh, uh, maintenance uh, application rights in DHS2 instance. So it's not too flexible when it comes to end users. Right. Um, So there are two types of program indicators uh, when we are working with tracker data. So we have event program indicators and we have enrollment program indicators, right? 
So what do we mean by event program indicators? So these indicators are evaluated per event with a particular within a particular program stage, right? So uh, events kind of like calculate uh, each of the events within that program stage, just similar to what we explained yesterday. Whereas enrollments evaluate across an entire enrollment within, uh, within a particular program. And uh, this is kind of a repetition of what I mentioned yesterday. When we are using enrollment program indicators, it uses the most recent event within a program stage in its calculations. Okay. It's just as same as I explained yesterday when we were doing the visualizations with event reports. Right, so let us also compare the event versus enrollment program indicators. What are the differences? So here, what we are trying to do is like, um, we are trying to count the number of PCR tests requested, right? And if you can uh, look at these two examples that are shown in the screenshot, in the first one we have for the stage two, which is a lab request, we have one event, right? So which is highlighted in gray color, we have one event. But in this second example, for the same, pro same program stage, we have two events. So when we request for an event or an enrollment uh, program indicator, the output is going to be different. That is what we want to highlight. So for example, if we ask, if we configure an event program indicator, which wants to count the number of, um, which, which, will only, which will count the number of events, so here, irrespective of uh, this, these two events being for the same person, because there are two events, when we use event program indicators, the output will come as number two. And when we use an enrollment program indicator, the output will come as number one. Is that clear? This is kind of recapping what we uh, um, explained yesterday. Yes, yes. Okay. Right. So let us look at an enrollment indicator example. So uh, what we are trying to do is we, we will try to see number of hospitalized cases with the positive COVID-19 test result, right? So here, this entire sentence, we can break down into several components. First thing is number of hospitalized cases. That's one thing we want to analyze. And it also has a filter. They should be positive COVID. They should be having a positive COVID-19 test result. Okay. So if we are going to develop this using an enrollment type program indicator, what it will do is, it will combine data from multiple program stages, okay? So it will check here uh, from the stage one, which is clinical examination and diagnosis, which is a non-repeatable stage in our demo instance. It will check whether the person is having yes for the hospitalized data element, right? We have a data element called hospitalized. They have the, all the patients who are fulfilling, who will be counted, will, will need to have yes value for this. Uh, variable. And then uh, for the lab result, which is coming from uh, the, the third stage, right? There it has to be positive. Okay, you can see here it has to be positive. So patients who fulfill both these criteria are the ones which are calculated, which are counted. And here the difference, because like yesterday we could not get an output like this. Okay, we were able to get an output, which, which is a line list kind of output. It, it was a list of patients we were getting. Not like if we wanted for this, uh, I mean, like here in this uh, table that you are seeing as the example output, uh, the first column is the areas. Say like it's if it is a province, okay? So for the province, how many people were there who were uh, COVID-19 confirmed and hospitalized? This kind of output we could not generate yesterday using an event report because the event report uh, enrollment analytics did not allow pivoting. But here, now we can't, okay? Right, so with that, uh, I, I mean, we come to end of the presentation and we are going to move uh, to the demonstration. Any questions up to this point?
Right. Uh, if there are no questions, let's uh, start the demonstration. So what I will do is I will quickly share my screen. So let's uh, right. Okay. So I have logged into the uh, logged into our demo instance, and um, what I'm going to do is like for this initial demonstration, I will use uh, the aggregate analytic tools, which are um, which is basically the data visualizer and uh, the maps application. So let me open the data visualizer application here right and then let us open an existing favorite item called um, quack underlying conditions last six months like this one so when i click and open this this is what i am seeing right so what do we see here in this uh, visualization we are seeing right people uh, who have received the vaccines and who are also having underlying conditions, right? So underlying conditions is one, uh, uh, so let, let, let us see like what were the data items which are collected, underlying conditions, right? And um, it is looking at um, the entire country for the last six months, okay? So here we are getting an aggregate output, okay? These are counts based on event data or rather tracker data, okay? So this is something that we were still able to do yesterday using event reports. Can you remember like event reports application allowed us do pivoting, right? Based on a particular program stage. It did not let us do pivoting when we want to combine multiple program stages, but this was again something possible yesterday using event reports, but here, the difference is we are trying to design this table using a pivot in the aggregate uh, data visualizer application. Okay, so that's what we are trying to do. Okay, so let me demonstrate to you how we are going to do this. So first of all, what we are going to do is to click on this new, so everything will refresh. And now I have to select the parameters. So first, what type of visualization? So I want to create a pivot table. I assume I, I did not explain too much about uh, the data visualization application because this is something you already know from our aggregate uh, uh, training programs on aggregate analytics and the uh, DHS2 fundamentals, right? So we have selected pivot from here and next we have to select the data dimension. So for data dimension, we are selecting the data type as Program indicators. We usually we are we are you we are, we are familiar with selecting indicators and data elements, but we are going to do something different here. We will select program indicators, right? And then after doing that, we have to select the program. So the program is to, is going to be COVID nineteen vaccination registry. This one, right? And we are searching for the program indicator called underlying conditions. Okay, this is one. So here. Uh, once I selected this, I have to select the period. So let me select last six months from here. Done. And organization unit, what I'm going to do is I will select the country, but I want the country to be selected at level two, right? So that I'm not looking at the entire, not only looking at the entire country, but I want the country data which are disaggregated at level two, which is a province level, okay? So after doing, uh, so I will just click on hide, and then let me see whether I have uh, all the uh, uh, layout set properly. So if you can remember the previous layout, so uh, like, is this the same thing what I'm going to get? Because there I can remember, the periods or the months were appearing as columns and the organization units were appearing as rows. So here it is not properly configured. So what I will try to do is, I will try to move organization units to the rows and periods 
to the columns. After doing that, let me click on update. And here we are getting the same table that we uh, that I showed to you before. Okay. So I, we didn't try anything too new. Only difference that we did compared to our usual aggregate analytics is to select the program indicator, which has already been configured, as opposed to uh, selecting a data element or a program or, or, a, or an indicator that we usually do when we are using this aggregate data visualization. Right? But one thing I have to mention is like when we are trying to do this, okay, uh, they have selected enrollment type of a program indicator. It's not an event type of a program indicator. Let us see whether, uh, I mean, what will actually happen if it is a, if it figured as an event type program indicator. Okay. So to do that, let me duplicate this tab and let me quickly create, yeah, let me see what is there. It's not been selected. So let me quickly select the program indicator. I will select uh, COVID-19 vaccine registry and let me search for the underlying conditions. We have two program indicators, right? The one at the bottom is the underlying conditions for events. So I'm going to select that because previously I selected the other one. And the periods, let me select last six months. The organization units now at level two. Okay, done. Let me rearrange. So put the org units here, period here, and I click on up. So yeah, period here. And I because it has to be pivot table. And I click on update. And this is what I'm getting. Okay. So if you can compare these two, this is the enrollment type. And here we have the event type. You can see, let us focus on the April column. So here for the uh, uh, Vientine, we are having for, for the April, uh, uh, in this first visualization that we initially developed, it has 23 as the value. Whereas for the second one, which is based on event analytics, the value is 33, right? So it is always the values that we are getting in the cells uh, in the event table is always more than what we are getting in the enrollment table. Why does that happen? What is the reason? Is my question clear? So I'm comparing these two tabs. Here we have the enrollment, here we have visual uh, events. So the values that we are getting in events is always more than the values that we are getting in this table in, uh, for the enrollment. What's the reason? Anybody? Yes, Amit, you have unmuted. Yeah, uh, it's a very simple question. Anyone wants to answer? All right. So the um, in enrollment, one person count only once uh, as it is reviewed to uh, stage. So when uh, that person uh, uh, get multiple uh, service or uh, repeatable um, stages, then it's called multi uh, multiple times in events reports. Right, exactly. So it's like this because here the enrollment, like only it, it only takes into consideration one event from a program stage, whereas uh, in the event type of a program analytics, it will count all the events which are present uh, for a given program stage. So that's why the the final calculated value is going to be more than what you always get for uh, enrollments. Okay. So hope that is clear. But one thing we have to keep in mind is uh, uh, what I have showed you now is something that was even possible using event reports yesterday. So let's see like some uh, certain things that we were not uh, able to do yesterday, right? So uh, uh, now one, yeah. So uh, let me like uh, keep the same uh, example and let, let, let's try creating a chart because we have seen how the tables work. Let's uh, design a chart using a program indicator so that I can uh, take this forward and explain you a few more concepts. So, um, 
what I'm going to do is uh, click here, file new, right? And then I will select a chart and let's try to open a chart whole. Symptoms and health out. This is the one, first one. COVID CBS symptoms and health outcome this year. Okay. Right. So let's see what, what is getting displayed. What can you see here? So here in this chart, it's a line chart. That's the first thing. And on the uh, x-axis, we have what? We have the individual org units, right? And then we have on the y-axis, the numbers. So here we are looking at COVID-19, uh, the patients who had COVID-19 symptoms present. And then on the blue, blue line, it is about COVID-19 symptoms present with and, and resulted in death. Red is COVID-19 symptoms present and recovered. So to produce this, we are using program indicators. And um, how, I mean, like, what do you, what can you think of the um, architecture or like what constitute this program indicators? So are these program indicators? Um, so let's, let's take each one of them. Like, um, what can you say about uh, these three program indicators? Are they taking data from only one stage or more than one stage? these three program indicators. All the stages, all, all three of them, um, Amit, what do you think? So, because you have, uh, so here, I'm not sure whether the answer is for this one, like uh, all three programs, uh, pro program indicators are varying from all the, uh, all the program stages. Is that so? Anybody else? Right, so um, it's like this. Yeah, Arif, you want to answer? Sorry, my network was not. Uh, yeah. You can also type in the chat, uh, it's no problem. Okay, so, uh, right. So what I wanted to highlight is like here, especially these two, the, the, the symptoms present and dead, as well as symptoms present and recovered, the symptoms percent is coming from uh, one stage, right? Okay, which is the stage one, which has clinical exam and diagnosis. And uh, then this health outcome, death or recovered is coming from stage four. So they are for these two data, uh, the, for these two uh, program indicators, it is kind of combining outputs from two program stages and try to plot this, okay? And we are actually getting here an aggregate output. So this was not something which was possible using event reports because we are looking at aggregate outputs across multiple program stages. So this can only be done to a program indicator. Is that clear? Right. If so, let's try to quickly design this uh, visualization. So I'm going to click on new. Okay. And from, because I want to draw a chart, Right, I will select a chart and the chart type is line. And then under data, I'm going to select the program indicators. Program is going to be case-based surveillance. And I'm going to search for the, uh, for the three program indicators. So I will just type symptoms. Okay, here we have the three. I will select symptoms present, double click, symptoms present and death, and symptoms present and recover. And then the period currently is last 12 months. I want to have years this year. And the org unit, what I want to do is I will select the country, but then I scroll all the way down. And I filter the entire country and get the data disaggregated by level two, which is provincial level. And then, of course, I'm going to uh, uh, change the layout a bit because I wanted all the um, org units in uh, x-axis. I'm going to move it to categories. 
The period, of course, I don't really mind where I, mean, I don't want it in the visualization, so I move it to the filter, and the data I want as series. That's it, and I click on update. And this is the visualization uh, that we saw before. Okay, is that clear? Uh, let me also do something else from here. What we can do is we can like, because now we have a chart, let's try to see from the same data visualizer, what happens if we made this a pivot table. So I'm going to select the pivot here and click on update. Let's see what we get. There we go. So we can, from using the data visualizer app, we can easily uh, change line chart to a pivot table, just like this, right? So now that we have uh, the individual figures in a very descriptive way, and we can even download this, okay? Uh, so we don't actually stop there. We can also do something else, which is we can convert this visualization, which is now a table to a map. So to do that, what we try to do is, we can click on this icon here and click, go all the way down and click open as map. Right? So when we do that, it will try to open this as a map, but one issue we are having is it will ask, like there are three data items, right? In this visualization, do we want all of them or only one of them, right? To be displayed as the map layer. The issue is because all these are coming from same org units, even though we select all three of them, it will overlap on one another. Right? So we won't actually see it properly. So let us only select one of them. So I will select deaths, right? And I will click proceed. There we go. By default, what it will do is it will convert those data and put it as a thematic layer on DHS2 Maps application. Right? So using the same application, we can actually shift between um, the chart and a pivot table, and we can transform that data to a map as well. Right? I hope it is clear. Any questions? Right. If there are no questions, we'll quickly try to do um, uh, the exercise one, which is in the learner's guide. Uh, let's try to take five minutes to do that. Uh, if, you, if you are not able to finish it, uh, it doesn't, I mean, like, it's okay. We will try to move to the uh, move forward in the demonstration and you can practice it later. Right? So let's take five minutes and try to do it. Uh, there's a question, we have subunits and levels. What is the difference? So it's like this. I mean, it's more or less the same, but subunits we are, we are defining based on the logged in user, right? So for example, uh, it's very relative thing. So if, if you configure the user, to be at district level and we have saved the visualization to use one subunit, right? So whoever who logs in, uh, he will see one level before, below. But whereas if we set something as level two, it uh, only the people who have access to level two will be able to see it. because others, if they don't have access to level two, it will not really work. So if you want it to want uh, things to be very relative, right? and uh, be flexible based on the logged in user, uh, using subunit is much better because it will always work on a, on, a, on a level, one or two levels below the logged in user. That's the difference. Right, so let's take five minutes and try to finish the exercise one. How many levels you can have? You can have any number of levels. It's not a problem. It's, a, it's about DHS2 configuration, but having too many levels is, can affect the performance of your DHS2 instance when it is uh, growing large. So you have to be careful about how many levels you want to have in your configuration. Any more questions? Right, so uh, let's meet in around uh, four minutes.
Right, uh, welcome back. I assume some of you may not have been able to uh, finish the activity yet, but uh, what we can do is we will try to uh, finish the demonstration because some of these activities are kind of uh, going back and forth between the different uh, analytic tools available. So probably like if you go through the entire demonstration and then try to attempt it, you will you might find it uh, more easy or more clear. So uh, let's start uh, the next activity. So let me share my screen. So we are already in, uh, yeah, we are already in the maps application. So let's try to open a uh, already saved uh, visualization which uses program indicators. So before before uh, opening the visualization, I must mention now you learned about how to use the maps application for visualizing track entity and events data in, in the morning, right? So one limitation was that it was focusing on the individual events and the track entities and the clusters but it was not actually um, taking into consideration how uh, certain track entity instances or events can be aggregated and displayed on the map, right? So that's the kind of gap that we are trying to address by using the program indicators. So let me open one program indicator. So there should be one called the COVID case-based surveillance suspected cases last 12 months. So let me click and open that one. It's a bit of a heavy visualization, so it might take a couple of seconds to load. There we go. So here we have a maps visualization, and this map is of bubble type. So uh, in this legend you are seeing here, right? So uh, if uh, the, the, the kind of the size of the bubble indicates how uh, significant the value reported was. And also you will, you will be able to see a timeline here at the bottom. So what we can actually do, now what you are seeing here is a timeline maps visualization. And let me click on this play button and see what happens. So right now in the timeline, by default, it is showing October to November, right? And when I click on the play button, you will see it will start moving, right? And then you will be able to see how the visualization changes by each month, right? You can see now the, the, the suspected cases are becoming higher compared to what it was uh, in the October, right? So this is in fact a nice visualization uh, that can be that can come in really handy when you are when you are doing a live demonstration and probably like uh, if you can put it in a dashboard and um, you can present it to a larger audience. So let's see how to produce this produce this visualization using uh, the maps application. Right. So let me click file and then new. Right. And then I need to add because I already have the base map. The base map is coming from this OSM light. So I will add a thematic layer. So I'm clicking on the add layer button and select thematic. And next under the data tab, I have to select uh, which uh, item type. So the item type is going to be a program indicator, which is coming from case-based surveillance program. And the name of the program indicator is COVID-19 suspected cases. Should be somewhere. Yeah, COVID 19 suspected cases, this one, right? And the period I will uh, select as relative last 12 months and then make it timeline. Right? And then the org unit, I will select LAO at level two. Okay, so that's done. And then let's move to the style, the style of the map. So I will select bubble map, right? And single color legend so that it will be only one color. Right? After doing all that, what I have to do is click on update layer, click on add layer. And then it will 
design the visualization. And here we go, we have that visualization. So basically what this map is showing, it will be showing the COVID-19 suspected cases as an aggregate value in a dot, right? So one dot per province, that's how it goes, right? For each of the months. Uh, in a snapshot view, we are only seeing the first month, but when we click on the play button, it will start a kind of a small clip where it will go on um, showing the bubbles for each of the months. And the size of the bubble indicates uh, the value of the aggregate number. So this all happens based on the program indicator we have defined or we have configured. The configuration of the program indicator, of course, is uh, out of the scope of this academy. But uh, when it is configured, you can nicely use it uh, for your analysis. Right, so are there any questions uh, about uh, how to use this program indicator for maps? Again, like uh, before you ask this question, currently we don't have a mechanism in DHS2 analysis. Like from this aggregate, uh, visualization figures. So uh, let it be, I mean, whether it is a, a map or a chart or a table, right? For, to, to directly jump into a uh, individual cases record, that is not possible. Say for example, if you want to like, once you click on this uh, uh, dot to uh, have a link where you can open individual records, no, that is not currently possible. Right? So that's one limitation we still have in DHIS2, which, which is of course a nice to have uh, feature, but of course it's kind of a very complicated design process. Any questions? If not, we can do the exercise number two in the learner's guide, right? And we can take around five minutes to do that. And we will meet in five minutes. Right, uh, welcome back. Mm -hmm. um, so we are moving on to the uh, latter part of my presentation. Uh, so in the, in, the, in the last section, what I want to highlight was a concept that I emphasized uh, in my previous presentation. That is about the program indicators can work at individual level to show a calculated value. Like say, for example, if you are obtaining a list of people in a table, we can use uh, program indicators for one column to get a particular figure for individual person. That is one. The next concept what I mentioned was, if you try to get use the same program indicator, which has an aggregate type, say, as a sum or average something, at uh, probably at district or provincial level, then that same program indicator will show an aggregated value based on all the people or all the persons, all the track entity instances, which are coming under that organization unit. Is that clear? So what I mentioned was the same program indicator, if you mention, if you use it at individual level to obtain a line list, and if you use it at a higher level, district or provincial or up at, at a higher level in your organization hierarchy uh, will, will produce two outputs because at higher levels, it will kind of aggregate uh, values of all the track entity instances. Whereas if we try to obtain a line list, it will mention the values for the individual person or individual track entity instance. Is that clear? Right. Any questions? If not, let me try to demonstrate something. So uh, let me share my screen. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm again back in this uh, familiar application which I, which we did yesterday, which is event reports application. This is not a data visualizer. This is event report application. So let's try to open a, a saved favorite item, which is. Uh, 
the item is context by person. So what do we have here? In this table, we can see, right? We have a list of people, right? Again, showing whether that person had the sign, signs and symptoms. And it shows how many COVID-19 contacts this person had, okay? So let's see how it has been configured. It has been configured as, the, as a line list with output type enrollment. So what happens in that case is like, it will be showing a list of people which takes into account values obtaining across multiple states, right? So uh, under the data section, we are seeing three, two data, uh, um, two, two program attributes, one data element, which is uh, science and symptoms present or not. And here PI stands for program indicator. So it is having this program indicator, which is called COVID-19 context. So how is this program indicator derived? So even though this is out of the scope of this, um, this uh, uh, lecture, let me quickly share my uh, other screen to show you how this has been constituted. Okay, now what you are seeing here is how a program indicator has been uh, configured in the maintenance app. So this particular program indicator, which is now the name of, is uh, COVID-19 context, is with the aggregate type average, okay? And the analytic type enrollment. So it will be taking into consideration the enrollment type of analysis and it will create an average when, when things are aggregated. And what is the expression or what is the criteria this uh, program indicator is uh, using to uh, derive its output? It is the relationship count. So how many relationships which has been attached to the track entity instance? So that is what this program uh, indicator is concerned about. Okay, so going back to my other screen. Yeah. So we are back uh, at this visualization, fine. So I hope it is clear. This is showing a line list of all the persons, right? Uh, and also showing at individual person level, how many COVID-19 contacts that person is having. Is that clear? So if so, let's try to quickly design this uh, table by ourselves. So I'm going to click on new, right? And then from the table style, I will uh, move a bit fast because we have already done this yesterday. I will click on line list and the output type is going to be enrollment. And the program is COVID-19 case-based surveillance. And the program stage, I will select the first stage, which is the um, clinical examination and diagnosis. So from that, let me initially select the two attributes, which are first name, surname, right? And then of course, uh, the data element, which is with the signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms present. And then let me select the program indicator, which is COVID-19 context. This is the one. Right. So I double clicked and put them here. The period is this year and the organization unit is CHW Mahasam. This is the one. And I click on update and I'm getting the same tip. Okay. Is that clear? This is what we did yesterday. All right. Now, uh, a few other things we can do, of course, you can like sort this table based on, uh, I mean, we just have to click on the column header so it will be sorted based on the value of that column. Um, and let, let me also add another program indicator to this visualization. So what I will try to add here is we have another program indicator, which is called days between onset and consultation. Right? So I just double click that and I add it to this uh, selected box. And then I have to click on update. And now we are seeing 
in addition to the uh, I mean the previous columns, we have an additional column which is the uh, onset between the consultation and uh, the days between the onset and the consultation. It is also in this table. Now, what do we see in this table? Here, the outputs are concerned about each of the track entity instance or each of the person. So it is showing, say, for example, this uh, Ryan Robinson, right? He had one COVID-19 contacts and the days between onset and consultation is zero, meaning he has got admitted on the same day. But whereas this uh, Timothy, he, ha he has one contact and the days between is six days, right? So likewise, here in this table, it is showing outputs at individual level, okay? Right. So now that uh, we are kind of clear about uh, how a program indicator works at individual level, we can see how it works when tracker data is aggregated and we are trying to visualize at a higher level in our OCUNY time. But before that, any questions? Okay. Um, if there are no questions, let me move. Uh, let me open um, the data visualize application. We will try to get the aggregate values of the same program indicators by using the data visualizer application. So I click here and open data visualizer. Right, and um, let's try to open the favorite item which is average, we have something like that. For some reason, uh, the saved item is not showing, but let, let me design a chart for you. So what I'm going to do is, like uh, I want to visualize a bar chart, right? Which shows the COVID-19 days between onset and consultation, the last program indicator we used, okay? And see how it is aggregated um, at, the low, at the level we are trying to see. So let me, see, let me design that uh, particular chart. So I will select the bar chart as a chart type, right? And then, for the data, what I will try to do is I will select program indicators and the program is going to be case-based surveillance. And from here, I will check uh, this one, COVID-19 days between onset and consultation. Right? And then the period, I will select years this year then the filter will be low PTR. We'll, we'll uh, visualize it at the lower level. So uh, we will select this uh, oak unit number 13, province 13, right? And in that one, let's try to take all the oak units at the level three. So basically one level down below this, right? That's it. And then um, let me see whether the categories are in particular order. So probably because I'm looking at the org units, uh, I want to have it in the category dimension, right? And period, I'm not too much worried because it's just one year I'm looking at and data is what I want in the series. So I'm happy with the layout and I click on update. And this is our chart. Now, what do we see in this chart? It's the same program indicator, COVID-19 days between onset and consultation. But here we are looking at individual um, uh, organizations, health, the health institutes or health areas, which are at level three under that province. So definitely these values we are seeing are not related to one person. So what may have happened? Anybody? How are we getting this 2.7, 1.9, 2.1? How do we, how, do, I mean, what are these values? Anyone who wants to make any guesses? So, average, sorry, 
Come again. Average value. Average value. Yes, that's correct. So average value because like if you can remember when I showed you how the program indicate has been configured, uh, it has been configured to take average as a concept when it is aggregated up in the org unit hierarchy. So what it is trying to do is for each of this org unit, right? It will take the values of uh, values which are coming for each track entity at uh, track entity instance, right? So each of the track entity instance, if you can remember, like as in the table before, uh, there was like for each uh, TEI, each person, we had a value for uh, days between onset and consultation. So they will, you know, take consideration of all these value and create an average and display it for each of the org unit, right? So that's what has happened. So this becomes really useful because uh, by using the program indicator, if we are at the facility level, if we are a facility health facility manager, we can get a line list and we can see like for each, each of the patient, what actually happened. But if you are district manager or health manager at provincial or national level, you are not worried about individual patients, but rather you want to, you want to see in my district or in my province or in my country, what is the, uh, usual days between onset and consultation for patients, right? So for this, average becomes a, a very good concept and that's exactly what it does. So if you just capture data at individual level, we are able to create these kind of visualizations at national level. So this is what is capable of, okay, uh, this is what is DHIS2 is capable of doing using programming. Is that clear? Any questions? What is the number before the org unit? Yeah, this should be probably the code, org unit code, because this is just coming from, this, these are not uh, uh, variable values, right? So these are the values that are, that are already configured uh, uh, when you are configuring the metadata of the DHS2 instance. Right, any more questions? Right. If not, there are no questions at all. I mean, like there were very few, but uh, I hope you understood because program indicators is a new concept. It, it might be a bit tricky understanding, but uh, I went as slow, slow as possible uh, with the given time. But if you have any queries, please feel free to ask now or probably in the uh, Slack. And uh, if you try to, so, so there's another uh, exercise in the le learner's guide that you have to do, exercise three. So once you do that, you will again get a, a clear idea of how to do it by yourself. Were there any questions? Yeah, Arif, you, you, you unmuted. You can also type it in the chat if your network is bad. Right, so let me quickly do a recap of uh, what we learned uh, under this session. Right, so a quick recap of uh, program indicators. A program indicator is derived from individual level event or tracker data, right? That's how the program indicator is derived. It could be from event data or tracker data. And then we can use program indicators in data visualizer, maps, as well as event reports. So you can use program indicators in the event uh, analytics applications, as well as aggregate analytics applications, as opposed to uh, uh, the data elements and attributes, which we were only able to use in um, the individual or event-related analytics application. There are two types of program indicators. We have one program indicator, which is of event type. This will perform an operation based on all of the events within a single program stage. So that's what the event type program indicators do. And then we also have the enrollment type program indicators, which will use data from most recent event 
And this can be combined with the data from multiple program stages and it will produce an output. And then finally, what I, what I tried to show you was that program indicators can function at two levels. So it can show data for one event or track entity instance, right? That's what I did like in the last demonstration by showing you a table. And then it also can show a summary of data for all the events or all the track entity instances within the specified org units and a period, right? So uh, because you did not ask, I will also mention this aggregation happens based on the org unit and the period, period of course, we can set again uh, when we are configuring uh, the program indicate. So usually it is the enrollment date, but you can even change that. So how to do that? You can learn when, we are, when you join the uh, Tracker Configuration Academy. So that's it I have to present for this uh, session. Any final uh, questions? If there are no questions, the graded assignments are available for all the sessions that we did today. Uh, uh, please do those. Uh, this, the, the assignment should be now visible in your Moodle. And also mark your attendance, which is compulsory. And please give us feedback. Yesterday, we did not get much feedback. Uh, so just a kind reminder, reminder, if you forgot to give uh, feedback for yesterday's session, please do so. And uh, today's feedback will also be available shortly. Let me enable the feedback. Feedback for day four is available now. And The attendance as well as the graded assignments for the day are also visible. Right, so that uh, so with that, I think we can conclude uh, today's session. Uh, it took long because uh, we had to deal with a uh, lot of new concepts and uh, show you a couple of new applications. But I uh, hope you can go through the uh, learner's guide and practice all the uh, steps that we demonstrated today and do the graded exercise. And uh, Saurabh, anything that you want to um, add before we conclude? Right, so uh, are there any, any questions? If not, tomorrow, um, again, uh, we have one session that will be about custom applications, right? And then we will have the, uh, the final examination. So this is again going to be a multiple choice uh, type of exam, just like what you have been doing for the graded, uh, graded assignments. So this this, and um, these marks together, the graded assignments are calculated that will contribute to your final grade. Uh, Saurabh, you want to, yeah, are you there? Are you online? Okay. So we are starting again tomorrow at the same time. Uh, yeah, Saurabh, uh, please go ahead. I think he's having some technical issues. So are there any questions?
I think Arif, uh, you try to unmute. Mm -hmm. Fine. So if there are no questions, uh, again, tomorrow we are starting at the same time at uh, 12 uh, noon Indian Standard Time. And we will do two sessions tomorrow. Uh, first, we'll have a customs application, custom web application. Uh, that's, uh, again, a, a session that we usually have. And then we have the final examination, which is the type examination, um, uh, which will contribute to your final grade. So that's it. Uh, thank you for joining. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.